and welcome back to my let's play um i have expanded my recording time to over 15 minutes so youtube should be happy enough with longer videos and uh hopefully so will all of you right so where were we so the once you've created the, the map your game world you will find this screen so you select your game from here um, you'll see a rundown of all the settings that you've chosen. The two things that will be different are the detection and disaster sections. So detection determines how non-player races or NPRs will determine their sensors. So normal means that they will use, use sensors just like you. So they have to do exploration and they have to get close and if their senses are really far away then they have to spend a lot of time getting close to each other uh, before they can actually shoot because they like to use beam ships a lot so it can come in it can be extremely annoying when you have two NPRs that are fighting one another in a system because not only do you have to wait for them to actually blow each other up but you also have to wait for them to get close to each other and it can be a royal pain in the ass um, none without player presence means that they don't use any detection at all they see each other automatically when you are not in the system and automatic with that player presence will is kind of like a blend between the two so it'll try and figure it out um, when they can detect each other and when they can't um, normal we're going to leave that uh, because they're not generated uh, beforehand anyway uh, disaster sets uh, tells the sun to warm or cool by one or two percent per year um, so eventually your planet uh, will be outside the habitable zone and will freeze or boil so you want to get the hell out of Sol as soon as you can um, we don't want that so we will keep that off so um, once you've got this selected you get this this is the main game doesn't look like much um, this window is the game so if this window gets closed so does the game as long as this little window is open everything keeps spinning um you've got a few options uh space master on or off uh, is what we'll be using to allocate our research points that we got as part of the trans newtonian start fast ob creation is what we'll be using to create our starting ships once we have them designed so um this is all basically to accommodate for the fact that we have a technically delayed start because we have not start as uh, pre-Newtonian. Um, this is a list of all your windows and most of them are accessible through the system map screen. So we'll be using that one. This part, not so much. Uh, and you've got a few things. Uh, reduced height windows we're not using, but for laptop users, you're probably going to end up having to use this so that your windows don't fall off the bottom of the screen. So let's get stuck into it. Welcome to Sol. So I've already done a little bit um, for a UI explanation video that ran too long for this Let's Play. Um, it'll be on YouTube, on, so you should be able to find it if you want to go through it. It is about an hour long, so yeah, a little bit too dry, a little bit too much, too early. Um, anyway, events are on. So the events that show up here show up here um, this log is as high as it goes uh, this one here is only for the last tick uh, the last increment that you did so uh, comes in handy for so you don't have to have the log open especially like me when you only have a single monitor um, but for the most part that's that so first thing we want to do is we want to go have a look at, well we'll get, we'll get a quick rundown of a plant of earth so let's see what we got um, so we've got four shipyards, three naval and a commercial. Not too bad. Commercials are easy and quick to build up, so that's not a big deal. Um, having a couple of naval ones with a couple of slipways is very useful. Um, what else have we got? We got 504 factories. Not bad. Uh, 14,000 tons of maintenance, which is really nice. Uh, 144 ordnance and 72 fighters. The 72 fighter factories are pretty redundant, useless because we're not going to be building fighters anytime soon. Um, but it's not a big deal. The ordnance are 
pretty good because we are probably going to need missiles soon. Fuel refineries, 240 is a good number. 480 mines is really nice. 96 Ottoman mines is good. We can immediately start doing, or, well, relatively immediately start doing uh, mining throughout Seoul as soon as we find somewhere nice to mine. Um, the advantage of automated mines, of course, is that they do not require any worker population, which means that you can go and dump them on Venus and they will chug out um, any minerals that are there without you also having to keep a couple of hundred, a couple of million people alive on Venus. Um, very, very handy. They are more expensive than mines, though, so um, that is the problem research labs have got 24 but we already knew that that's fine ground force training facilities that's fine as well uh we're gonna level one military academy we want to get that up as soon as possible and we've got a thousand tracking strength which is nice uh right um uh, industry will go later so let's go have a look at our tech what have we got so we got 144,000 starting research points so to distribute that, you're going to need to use uh, Space Master mode. So we'll close this because it doesn't update. We'll go turn Space Master on. Password is blank by default. And now we have our Space Master commands. The two buttons you'll see are Instant and Instant RST. So Instant will give you that tech flat out. Instant RST will give all techs that you have generated through the design view. So engines, uh, missiles, uh, sensors, whatever. Now, I like my ships fast. So first thing I want is some decent engines. Because the conventional engines that we start off with are garbage. Um, we'll have a look at the... What, what the let's have a look at what, who we have. We've got four biology guys, which is horrible. We've got nobody in construction, nobody in defensives, one guy in energy, one guy in logistics, sorry, one girl in energy, one guy in logistics, nobody in missiles, one guy in power, and one guy in sensors and fire control. Um, with this, with these scientists, it looks like we're going to be uh, going with early beam weapons because we can get um, some lasers, uh, a few fire controls, and uh, some decent engines and power plants. Um, so it's going to be a little complicated, difficult, but we can work something out. We uh, until we get a missile guy, we're not going to bother with missiles, even though yes, they are a lot more better for lack of a better word, um, we're going to go with that. Um, logistics, we're also, we're also going to need some of this. Not a, not too much, but a few items off here. Um, defensive, this is going to hurt the most because we really need a defensive guy to get us some decent armor um, because armor gets really massive when it's especially low-tech, especially conventional armor, and we really need something decent there. Um, might even want to consider using shields uh, if we're going to be doing some brawling, but we'll see how that works. This one is also going to hurt a lot uh, because we can't get a construction rate. Um, well, not easily, but we can't get a construction rate or civilian economy, um, mining rate, research rate, shipbuilding rate, and shipyard ops. All of this is going to be a drag when it comes to researching. So that hurts but we'll do what we can. Um, first of all, let's get what we can. Power propulsion, we want a nice engine. So I'm going to get pebble bed reactor and gas-cooled fast reactor. I want ion engines as soon as possible. Ion engines, I find, are the first engine that lets you really get decent speed out of it. Um, anything less than that, and it's you, you really need too much engine to really be good. Um, we'll get a couple of levels of fuel consumption because they're just so damn handy. Um, we'll see if we have any spare left to go higher than that, but point, uh, point 0.7 should be fine for now. <clears throat> I want to uh, we'll get jump point theory and... That's fine. We'll get grav sensors too. That we can get our 
uh, survey ship up and running immediately. Let's see what else we need. Uh, da, 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 da. We don't need any energy weapons right this instant, and we do have a scientist for us, so that's fine. Get a decent armor. We at least need high density geranium. Okay, next. Um, we don't need that. We have a scientist for it, and a really nice one as well. <clears throat> okay, construction and production. This is probably where a good chunk of it is going to go. So we want research rate. We want to get that up high. With the with the horrible scientists that we have, we need a really nice chunk of research rate. So we're going to spend most of our tech points on that. Uh, mining production. We'll get two levels of that. Same And one level of construction rate. We'll get a little civilian economy to keep our wealth up. Uh, ship building rate, we'll get that up as well. Time cost saving, we'll get a few levels of those because they're really useful. Um, what else do we need? So I'll, I'll go over why I'm ignoring certain things. So the asteroid mining module. Um, this component you put on your ship and it basically acts as a mine. Now, asteroid mining modules have a few benefits and a few drawbacks. One of the biggest benefits is that um, a, a mine on a planet, okay, it, get benefits, it gets benefits from t three places. The mining production technology, which gives it a flat mining rate. The mining bonus of the planetary governor and a quarter of the mining bonus of the sector governor. So you get three places where a planetary mine gets its bonuses from. Now, an asteroid mining module gets its bonuses from a fourth place. An asteroid mining module gets its bonuses from the captain that is on the ship. So a captain has a mining bonus that he applies to the mining module itself, and then that, on, and then that gets multiplied on top by the first three. Well, the first two. So you got the mining. So you got the base mining production. It gets multiplied by the captain bonus. And then it gets multiplied by the planetary and sector governor. So an asteroid mining module will inherently give more productivity than a ground-based mine. Pretty much no matter what. Unless your captain has a 0% bonus, you will always get a more production out of an asteroid mining module than a planetary mining module. So what's the drawback? The drawback is that an asteroid mining module does not provide bonuses to a planet or a moon. It is, as it says on the tin, an asteroid mining module. You, you park it on an asteroid, you get the full bonus. You park it on a planet, you get nothing. So... You'll find a lot um, comets as well. You can, you can mine comets with it. But essentially, an asteroid mining module will own... If you run out of asteroids, or if you have no good asteroids, your asteroid mining module is a complete waste of resources. It's totally useless to you. Whereas a... Um, Whereas a ground mine, and especially an automated mine, an automated mine is expensive, but it's fantastic. because You, you can pick it up and drop it anywhere. And it will just work. You don't need to worry about, oh, do I have this? Do I have that? Nope, just works. Done. Um, so, actual mining module can be useful, but I'm not going to use it for now. Um, fighter production, we're not going to be using fighters right, right now. Fuel production as well. Early on, you don't need much fuel production. Once you get lots of lots and lots and lots of ships, you'll need it. But right now, you don't need much. So, that can stay where it is. Jump gate construction module. Um... We're going to be using jump drives. We're not going to need the jump gate. It's only 5,000 tech points. We can bang that out with pretty much any scientist, especially with 24 labs. So we're not going to waste our research points for that. Um, especially the small one. Uh, the small jump gate, you can see that it takes 360 days. That one takes... This one takes 180, but it's bigger. Um, eventually, you'll get jump gate construction modules as you take it up. Um, they get uh, faster and faster and faster. Um, sorium harvester. I'm, I'm not using this for two for two reasons. Number one, I've got plenty of sorium on Earth, so we're not going to run into a shortage anytime soon. Um, 
And more importantly, until you research this, civilians are going to bring, aren't going to build their own harvesters, which means they're, they're not going to steal your fuel. Um, so very handy. Um, and underground infrastructure is 20,000 research points, and I don't really use it. It's a complete waste for me. Um, if I run into a planet that I really, really badly want and I need some, especially because you can't move it. Underground infrastructure, you can't move. You have to build it on site, you can't move it. Um, if I run into somewhere that I need it, then I'll get it, um, but right now, no. Uh, defensive system, th with thermal reduction. Um, thermal reduction reduces the thermal output of your engines, but it drastically re increases the cost in gallocyte. If we go have a look at our min minerals, we've only got 84,000 gallocyte. Um, we, we really can't afford to be burning gallocyte on thermal reduction when we need it for actual engines. Um, Especially because most NPRs will spot you using um, active sensors anyway, so uh, reducing a thermal signature is not really useful. Uh, if you, when when I start building te uh, stealth ships, I'll get cloaking technology and thermal reduction, and then we'll bang out a nice ship. But initially, these technologies are completely 100% useless. There is no point whatsoever to get them until you start th until you start thinking about building stealth ships. Um, shields are great, but you really do need a couple of levels to get them useful um, because shield generators get get start getting very quick, very big, very quick. Um, especially if you want to get a decent shield strength until you get a decent amount of shield technology we can't afford the research points right now so they go they're gone um armor is uh, armor is cheap armor is useful it's cheap it's not very massive at all you can get a couple of layers on a couple of thousand tons of ship and it provides really nice protection for a, quite a while so armor good early on shields not so good um damage control will get that once you start building warships it's once again it's 5000 rp very cheap um Energy weapons, I'm not getting any of these right now because A, we really don't need them. We've got nothing to shoot. We're not going exploring and nobody's coming to us. We don't need them. We have a, we have a scientist for it. We'll get that later. Um, missiles and kinetic, we don't have a scientist, so we're not going down the path of missiles just now. So we don't need any, any of those. We will need uh, Goss to shoot down their missiles. So I might actually grab... I'll actually grab this up to there um, because that gives us a decent um, goss turret so that's fine but missiles will do uh, another time power propulsion once again we have a technician we've got our we got our um, re we got a reactor and an ion drive and we've got a little bit of fuel consumption. We'll get we'll get the we'll let the scientist do the rest. Um, sensors. Uh, once again, we have a scientist for that, so we can let them do their own thing um, using the research labs. So that will do. So now that we've got that taken care of, last thing to do is go through our logistics. Now we have a logistics scientist, but he is kind of crap because he's got a bonus of zero percent, which means that Kate will be better at researching than this guy, unless we give him 40, 12 labs. If we give him 12 labs, he'll be just as good as Kate working with 10. So right now, he's uh, he's uh, pretty terrible. Um, we do want a few things though. Uh, we do want improved command and control to give us sector commands. And we do want, uh, what do we want? We don't really need that much, to be honest. Everything we can get through research, so, um, yeah, that'll be fine. Uh, okay, what, do, do we need anything else? We need... I think that's about it. So what we'll do is we'll get another level of fuel consumption. And we've got 5,000 points. Now we can spend more than that. But what I might do is I might actually bag us a jump drive worth. So jump drive efficiency. 
need one level of efficiency, one level of squadron size, one level of jump radius. There we go. So that will let us build um, <clears throat> jump drives. So what do we need now? Now we need our ship. In order to do that, we need some technologies. So first thing we need, that's what we have first. So we want a nice long survey because we have a jump drive, right? We have jump drive tech and we have both geo and grav survey. So we might as well go for a full, for a full um, exploration ship. There we go. <clears throat> And so it automatically adds a bridge, an engineering space, a fuel storage, um, enough crew quarters, and one layer of armor. So what we need is we need a few geo sensors, a few grav sensors. We'll go for three of those. We don't need any of that. We just need the sensors. So now let's go build us an engine. <clears throat> so we've got ion engine. We go 50 engine power to make it commercial. And we go 50 size. Now the reason we I always go 50 size for my engines is that if you have a look, a, 20, a size 25 engine produces 150 engine power, which is exactly half of a 50 size engine. So, uh, uh, two 25 size engines are exactly the same as two 50 size engines, except for one thing the fuel use. Fuel use per hour, 15.9 liters. On the other hand, 11.9. Yeah, it's a little bit less, but it's not half less. So, you get half the power for, uh, what is it? 12, 15, for about 4 um, liters per hour less compared to 16. So you lose a lot of power, a lot more power than you use fuel consumption. So size 50, that will do. So we'll create ourselves our standard ion drive. And I'm, I'm actually going to make these guys a little bit safer than I normally would. I'm actually going to give him a thermal sensor. Just a small one, a little 110th sensor. This should hopefully see enemy ships before they get right up in our face. So that will do. Uh, we don't need anything else. Oh, yes, we do need. Now, we need the jump engine, but we're not going to do build it right now. So, because what we need to know is we need to know how big our actual ship is going to be. So, power of propulsion is not very good, but we'll train him up. <clears throat> 750 points. Okay, so that's on the way. And we also want that thermal sensor. Five labs will be enough for that. There we are. And what, what do we need? We also needed... We got the engine, we got the thermal sensor. Yep, that's it. <clears throat> so, what we'll do th now then is we will get started on the rest of our research. So, we'll put Kate onto laser and visible light laser. And we need turret tracking gear. And we'll get spinal mount as well. And for power and propulsion, we've got power and propulsion sensors, logistics. Yeah, we want, we want to bang out this logistics. So, we want boat bay and small boat bay, brigade headquarters, uh, combat drop modules. Combat drop modules are basically used to instantly unload troops. Um, so, with a troop transport bay, uh, it's treated like a car cargo base, so it takes time to load, it takes time to unload. With a combat drop module, it takes time to load, but it unloads instantly. Um, 
that means that your ship doesn't have to sit there for potentially hours at a time unloading troops while it's potentially in threat. So very handy to have that there. Um, the other bit major thing of combat drop modules is that you can use them to drop troops onto uh, enemy ships, which means boarding actions, which is fun. Um, but we'll cover that in detail once we actually find something to board. We get some fuel, we get the engineering sections. Um, construction brigades are extremely useful, we'll get those. Uh, orbital habitat module, that is extremely useful because it allows us to build orbital habs. Uh, troop transport bay, yes, we'll get that. And then we'll start on our infantry. Oh, improved cargo handling system, that's also very useful. So, Patrick has got a lot of work ahead of him. But hopefully he should be able to um, do what he needs to do. So, next on the agenda, we'll need some industry. What's our time? Our time is 25. Yeah, we've got a bit of time. Next on the agenda, we need some industry. So, we'll get, we're going to get some stuff out of the way first. So, get uh, 10 mass drivers. I'm going to put that as 25. Yes. And we want a few military academies. Let's go for three. And we need... I want two more commercial shipyards. Because one's just not enough. <clears throat> we only have 504 construction factories. So I will produce 496 to make it an even thousand. <clears throat> um, what else do we need? We need the sector command. Get one of those. And we need a spaceport. Um, a spaceport acts as a cargo handling unit for any and every ship on board. So each level of um, spaceport will act as a single level of cargo handling unit. So uh, cargo, uh, so freighters and stuff like that will load and unload much faster when loading and unloading to this planet. Um, very handy, faster turnaround times. Uh, it means that uh, it just makes life a lot easier for everyone involved. Um, we will actually reduce this one down to 10 because we're not going to need mass drivers for a while. I do want the Sector Command ASAP, though, so I'll drop that to 15. Um, if we don't, if we leave, see how this, in, this is in the queue? If we leave this in the queue, even though there is enough construction, it will wait for the five-day tick before it actually picks it up. So what you want to do is, if you have enough production, you click the Up button, and that will bump it into actual production. Get it out of the queue and into production. Um, so make sure you do that for things that you need to get done um asap it's not critical but it can save you you know a five-day cycle worth of production so you never know but better, better than wasting it at least okay um let's have a look at minerals i don't think i've actually gone over that so we got really good minerals of pretty much everything and fairly good accessibility um accessibility on corundium is a little bit low we're lower than I like, especially boronite, uh, but that's not too bad. The low neutronium is not really good, but neutronium is pretty much entirely used for upgrading shipyards, so it's not that big a deal. Corbomite is low as well, but it'll do. Um, the quantities are really nice on everything except titanium, which is used for pretty much all armor, and it's really, really bad that it's that low. Um, and Galasite, which is used for engines. So it would be, it would be really nice to have those a bit higher, because you, you tend to burn through Galasite pretty quick when you're building lots of um, ships, especially at the speeds that we're going to have to get ours to. So last thing is we will do our commanders. So... We'll do a tour of duty of 24 months. No, make it 12 months. Make sure everybody gets what, what they want. What they want. And civilian administrators, who are we going to get to govern Earth? We have Bethany Goodwin with a mining bonus. Or Evie Roberts with a shipbuilding, factory, wealth, and population growth. 
Hmm. I really like the factory, but I also really like the mining. Um... We don't need the minerals, I'm going to have to go with the factory. And the wealth creation bonus is also really nice. And we will eventually be building ships. So overall, she is a much better fit as governor for, for Earth. Uh, whereas Bethany, uh, she's got the terrifying bonus, which is great. And the mining bonus, which is also great. But like I said, we don't need the minerals and we're not doing any terraforming. So she will go somewhere else. I think about actually the assign her as a sector governor. Yeah, we'll put her in sector governor position because that way every planet will get a mining bonus and every planet will get a terraforming bonus, which is really nice. So that is what we will do. Right. So that's half an hour. And I'll uh, put a cut here and we'll go uh, see you on the next one.